Hi there. Let me take you through the handout here where I want you to learn what the sampling distribution looks like for sample means. So we're looking at if we graphed lots and lots of sample means, how would their shape, center, and spread appear to us? But we're going to use this condition. We're assuming that we are sampling from a population, x, which is distributed normally, its mean is mu of x, and the standard deviation is sigma x. So here's the idea. A mean is a linear combination of a series of random variables. So notice the sum of all of the x's divided by n. That's how you calculate a sample mean. Well, that's like 1 over n times that sum. So you can really distribute the 1 over n to all of these individual observations from our population. I know we've done an analysis like this before. So the idea is each one of these x values comes from this population, which is normally distributed with this mean and this standard deviation. So, but now what we're looking at in terms of a sample mean, a sample mean is a combination of those, and it's a linear combination. I'm doing some multiplying by this factor of 1 over n, and I'm adding all of these terms together. So I already know that the shape for these sample means is going to be normal. That is because if I take a variable that's already distributed normally, and if I do a linear combination of normally distributed variables, I still get a normal shape. We just have to decide what the center and the spread are. So notice for the center, we're going to use the expected value of the mean. So I'm looking at the center or mu of the x bars, the center of the means of this combination of random variables. So understand, just like we did in our last unit, I can just plug and chug. So I have a combination of x's. They've all been multiplied by 1 over n. So literally, I can just take x's mean and substitute it in here and in here and in here. So I'm literally taking the mean that I already knew, and I can plug it right in. So that's what I've done down here. I have 1 over n times the expected value of x, but the expected value of x is listed up here. It's just mu x. So here it is. And that's true for all of them. This expected value is also mu x. So is the last one. Now understand, there are n observations here. Remember, the sample mean, I've taken n of these x's that are all independent observations of one another. So that's why I'm dividing by n. So because my sample mean is out of n observations. So there are actually n of these. So instead of writing it n times, I can just take this term and write it once, 1 over n times mu of x. But there are n of them. So I can multiply by n, and then notice the n and the 1 over n cancel, and I get just mu of x. So what this means is the center of the sampling distribution, the center of all of the x bars, is the truth. It's just the old mean of x. So I know then that my x bars, my sample means are distributed normally, and their mean is the same as the mean for x. It's truly the middle of my normally distributed x's. So the only thing left to do then is to come up with the standard deviation. But it falls back on this idea, a mean is a combination of normally distributed variables. So I can take then, I can find the variance of all of these terms. So I can use the variance of this x and the variance of this x and the variance of this x. But what that means is that I have to change this 1 over n since I'm going to use a variance here, which is a squared quantity. I've got to take the 1 over the n and square it as well. That's what's going on down here. And it's important that the observations are independent. Because the observations are independent, I can add the variances. So to find the variance of x bar, I can take the variance of the first value of x and multiply by 1 over n squared, combine that with the second x observation's variance. It'll be the same, times 1 over n squared. And I'm going to do that again n times. So the 1 over n, the quantity squared, is just 1 over n squared. And the variance of x is the old standard deviation, the standard deviation of x and I just have to square it to make my variance. So every one of these 
standard deviation of x squared, standard deviation of x squared, and notice there are n of them. Well, I can just write this term then one time. I can write the one over n squared times the variance of x. I can write it once, but there are n of them. So notice when I multiply then, this n cancels with the n squared, which leaves just one of them in the denominator. This is the variance of the sample means. So to find the standard deviation then, I just have to take this expression. To find the standard deviation of the sample means, I just have to take this, the square root of this expression. So the square root of the numerator is just the standard deviation for x. And in the denominator, I just end up with the square root of n. This is the standard deviation. That is the standard deviation for my means. So this is a really special result here. The sample mean is distributed normally. The true center is the center of the x's from right here. And for the means, the standard deviation is just the standard deviation of the x's, which came from above. But then I have to take that standard deviation and adjust it. I have to divide by the square root of n to get the standard deviation for these sample means. This is the sampling distribution of x bar, but this is under a special circumstance. This is when I know that the x's that I'm averaging, I'm sampling from a normally distributed population, and I'm taking an average out of that population. When that is the case, this is the sampling distribution. So what I want you to try then, if you look at the back side then, I am going to ask you to try two questions in the context here of sampling. Both of these questions involve a model that we've looked at before, the heights of women aged 18 to 24. They're approximately normally distributed with this true mean and with this true standard deviation. So what you're working with here is x's that are distributed normally with this mean, 64.5, that's mu x. And then the standard deviation that you're working with is the 2.5, that is sigma x. I will put the solutions to the back side with my work. I will put that on Moodle also so that you can see how well you're doing. The idea of the back page then is to do a couple of examples to compare how did we use z-scores before and an example two, how are we going to use z-scores now in the context of sample means. Hope this has been helpful.